Are you a tennis player that's finally realizing that pickleball is just an all-around better sport? Or are you a former tennis player looking to just improve your pickleball game? Then this video is for you. In this video, we're gonna go over some of the differences and similarities between tennis and pickleball, some common mistakes that tennis players often make when transitioning into the sport, and the most important shots to practice transitioning from tennis to pickleball. And be sure to stay tuned to the end of this video because we're giving away $1,000 worth of Selkirk store credit split evenly between five lucky winners. You don't want to miss it. Stay to the end to figure out how to enter. Let's roll. we're going to talk about is the serve. Similar to tennis, you are serving cross court into the diagonal big box. But different from tennis, instead of hitting high to low, you're having to serve low to high. The next thing that we're going to go over is the return. Oftentimes when tennis players come into pickleball, they really try to rip their return and then they stay back because they're comfortable here on the baseline. But high level pickleball players realize that they're trying to make their way forward toward the kitchen. So as they hit that return, their momentum is bringing them forward to the net as opposed to staying back. Now there are two things you really wanna keep in mind when it comes to hitting a ground stroke or a drive. The first thing is your contact point. In tennis, you have a lot longer of a racket, right? Pickleball paddles aren't that long, but with that, you wanna make sure that your contact point is actually closer to your body. While you don't wanna jam yourself, you really wanna make it a short and compact swing. The next thing you wanna keep in mind when transitioning from tennis to pickleball, on those ground strokes, you're actually gonna approach the ball with a slightly more open stance. In tennis, a lot of times people will turn their entire body because they have time. There's a lot further distance between them and their opponent, so they have time to turn their body. In pickleball, it's a closer distance between you and your opponent, so it's more advantageous to hit your drive with a slightly open stance to ensure you're ready for the next ball. Now we're gonna go over some of the common mistakes I see tennis players make when they transition into pickleball. The first mistake I see is that when tennis players serve the ball, they sprint to the net. The problem with that is in pickleball, the return has to bounce. So you must stay back, hit your third shot, and then approach the net. So the way that it would look is a tennis player would often serve the ball, run up, and then attempt to volley that next ball, where that would be a fault in pickleball. Instead, you wanna stay back, serve that ball, and make sure that you're, you stay behind the line to hit that third shot because the ball must bounce. The next mistake I often see tennis players make are they have a really big backswing. Again, you have to remember pickleball is a lot smaller in tennis. It's more advantageous to have a short and compact swing because your opponents can't tell what you're doing. If you have this really big backswing, you're actually getting rid of disguise. Another common mistake I see when tennis players come into pickleball is that they're gonna hold that paddle with more of a Western grip and attempt to create topspin. However, there's not strings on a pickleball paddle. So when that happens, oftentimes they'll roll the ball into the net. Instead, what you wanna try to do when you're transitioning into pickleball is to maybe start with more of a continental grip that will allow you to keep that ball over the net and in the court. The last mistake I often see tennis players make is they end up just hitting the ball way too hard. Now you have to remember we're not on a tennis court and the pickleball court's a lot smaller. What happens is if you hit balls really hard, a lot of times they're gonna go out. So if you wanna keep more balls in and have a more strategic play, don't hit every ball hard, but actually incorporate some softer and finesse shots into your game. Now we're gonna talk about some of the most important shots for you to practice when you're making that transition from tennis to pickleball. And for more in-depth videos on all these shots, be sure to check check out the playpickleball.com YouTube channel as we break these shots down in further detail. The first shot that we're gonna go over that's important for you to practice is the third shot drop. Now remember, different from tennis, the return must bounce. So after you serve the ball, you're gonna stay back and then you're trying to drop the ball into the opposing team's kitchen in an unattackable spot that will allow you to move forward. So again, after I serve, I'm gonna stay back, that return's gonna bounce, and then I'm gonna try to aim that ball into the kitchen. So if you go ahead and feed me some balls here, I'll show you how it looks. I'm lifting the ball, trying to hit an unattackable shot. 
and I'm just adding a lot of loft to the ball here, trying to hit an unattackable ball that will allow me to move forward. The next shot that's really important for you guys to learn is actually called the reset. Now the reset is a shot that happens after your third shot and in this area of transition, okay? A lot of tennis players, when they get into this transition zone, I'll see a lot of like ripping the ball as fast as they can. Now, two things typically happen when you rip a ball in this area. One is the ball either goes out, or two, the ball's going so fast it goes to your opponents, but then that translates off their paddle, and now that ball is coming just as fast or faster at you. So a reset is a ball that's hit in this area that will help you gain more real estate so that you can get up to the kitchen. So what it would look like is I'm hitting my third shot and I'm getting into the transition zone and balls are maybe speeding up at me and I'm really wanting to make my way all the way up to the kitchen so that me and my partner are both here having the best real estate on the court. The next shot that's really important to learn is called the dink. Now this is done primarily when you and your partner are both up here at the kitchen line and it's a very soft and finesse shot. Now I know it doesn't maybe look super cool, but this shot is absolutely vital to set up points. So what it's gonna look like is it's a softer controlled shot and your whole goal with the dink is hitting an unattackable ball that your opponents won't be able to speed up, as well as setting up the play for them to make a mistake for you to speed up and ultimately win the point. The last shot that's really important for you to practice when you're transitioning from tennis to pickleball is the 60% speed up. As we mentioned before, it's very common that tennis players will come into the sport and they'll try to just hit as hard as they can and power the ball through their opponents. The problem with that is the ball will often sail long and you have no shot to win the point. Instead, when you're dinking at the kitchen line, you're waiting for a ball. Sometimes there'll be a ball that bounces maybe a little bit higher and you'll want to speed the ball up. But if you notice in my swing there, it was nice, short, and compact. I didn't swing 100%, I just swung 60%, and I'm waiting for the next ball. Oftentimes, a 60% speed up will create a pop-up for me to put away, or the opponent will reset the ball, as she just did, and we'll be right back in that dinking rally. So let's look at it again. I'm gonna keep my swing and my speed up nice and short and compact. So notice how I'm not swinging too hard there, and that'll be a really successful way to learn to attack your opponents and apply pressure without being out of control. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the playpickleball.com YouTube channel. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. And as we mentioned before, we're giving away $1,000 worth of Selkirk store credit split evenly between five lucky winners. To enter the contest, click this link, or you can find this link in the description below. And don't click away because we have another video coming your way.